This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. President Vladimir Putin said on Wednesday Russia was not using gas as a weapon and was ready to help ease Europe's energy crunch as the region's bloc called an emergency summit to tackle skyrocketing prices. Energy demand has surged as economies have rebounded from the pandemic, driving up prices of oil, gas and coal, stoking inflationary pressures and undermining efforts to cut the use of polluting fossil fuels in the fight against global warming. China, the world's second biggest economy and its biggest greenhouse gas emitter, has boosted coal output and imports, as domestic coal prices have hit record levels and power stations have struggled to keep the lights on in homes and factories. Investment in renewable energy needs to triple by the end of the decade if the world hopes to effectively fight climate change and keep volatile energy markets under control, the International Energy Agency, IEA, said on Wednesday. The world is not investing enough to meet its future energy needs. Transition-related spending is gradually picking up, but remains far short of what is required to meet rising demand for energy services in a sustainable way, the IEA said. Clear signals and direction from policymakers are essential. If the road ahead is paved only with good intentions, then it will be a bumpy ride indeed, it added. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The European Union will seek a ban on tapping new oil, coal and gas deposits in the Arctic to protect a region severely affected by climate change, according to a proposal for the bloc's new Arctic strategy published on Wednesday. The European Commission proposal reflects the EU's efforts to boost its role on the global stage, though it has limited influence in the Arctic. It is not a member of the Arctic Council, the regional coordinating body, though three of its member states, Denmark, Finland and Sweden, are. The EU is committed to ensuring that oil, coal and gas stay in the ground, including in Arctic regions, the EU executive's proposal said while acknowledging that the bloc itself still imports oil and gas extracted in the region. China's September crude oil imports fell 15.3% from a year earlier, data showed on Wednesday, as companies drew on inventories amid rising global prices and as tightened import quotas continued to constrain purchases. Meanwhile, natural gas imports rose to the highest since January at 10.62 million tonnes, according to data from the General Administration of Customs, as companies built up inventories ahead of the peak winter heating season amid a shortage of coal for electricity generation that has triggered widespread power outages. China, the world's top crude oil buyer, brought in 41.05 million tonnes of crude oil last month, or about 9.99 million barrels per day, BPD. That compares with 10.49 million barrels of oil per day in August and 11.8 million barrels of oil per day a year earlier. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Major car makers like Volkswagen, Daimler and Stellantis have been racing to secure battery cell supplies in Europe, but may face a bigger challenge as they seek to go electric, finding enough battery raw materials. Failure to obtain adequate supplies of lithium, nickel, manganese or cobalt could slow the shift to electric vehicles, EVs make those vehicles more expensive and threaten car makers' profit margins. There is a serious question as to whether supply can keep up with demand across the battery supply chain, says Daniel Harrison, an auto analyst at Ultima Media. A group of banks that partnered with the London Metal Exchange, LME, to launch gold and silver futures in 2017 is preparing to abandon the project after hoped for volumes did not materialize, three sources with direct knowledge of the matter said. Such a move would end an attempt by the LME, which dominates industrial metals trading to capture part of London's bullion market, which is the world's largest with gold worth some $17 trillion changing hands last year. The LME launched the contracts with partners including Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, who agreed to promote trade in them in return for 50% of revenues generated. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Iran needs to buy a record 8 million tons of wheat in the current season, Iranian industry sources said after its domestic crop was hit by drought, 
while the jump in imports will coincide with high global grain prices adding to pressures on the country's finances. Bread is a staple in Iran and any shortage would be another blow for the government after violent protests in July, as people took to the streets over water shortages. Iran's economy has been hit hard by sanctions imposed by former U.S. President Donald Trump as well as the COVID-19 pandemic, making it difficult for Iran to pay for food and medicine. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.